What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. Today, we're back at Copart, yard number 18, 2829 Southeast 15th Street here in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. We're gonna start off today with what you see in the thumbnail, which is a Dodge Viper. So we've seen this car here before. It's a 95 Dodge Viper RT10. And the last time we were here, I couldn't figure out how to open the hood. So I Googled it yesterday and figured out how to open the hood. I was actually surprised when I looked up the specs of this car, considering how old it is, it's actually still pretty quick, even by today's standards. Of course, I'm sure that V10 helps quite a bit. It does zero to 60 in something like 4.5 seconds. It'll do the quarter mile in the mid 12s. That's pretty impressive for a car that doesn't have proper windows. And honestly, that roof, uh, <laughs> it, it's, that roof is something. It looks like a toupee. In fact, I wonder if they called it a toupee because that is exactly what it looks like. You've got your, uh, your zipper right here to, uh, well that closed it. So I guess this opens it, there you go. You got your zipper so that you can actually reach in and open the door. Still a cool car. Personally for me, I would just take the top off of it. I think the top looks absolutely ridiculous. Uh, leave these down. I think that it's a sick car, man. And the price on this thing is really not bad. I think right now they put a buy it now on it of about $25,000. It was wrecked in the past. I think we went over that before. Some of you may have seen this and some of you may not. Uh, back in the day, quite a while back, it had gotten into a little, a little, I wouldn't even call it a fender bender, but it had some damage right here. Nothing that was significant at all. And it looks like that was repaired. It looks decent. And if Google serves me correctly, then I think the hood release is actually right here. There it is. Then there's a little release right here that you gotta, now that's the part I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> I think it, is it up, is it down, is it over? Ah, hold on, I'll get it. The hood release is right here. Urgh. Looks like you gotta push the hood down just a tad. There you go. All right, then, you carefully, there's actually a procedure, a proper procedure for opening the hood. You don't grab the hood over here and lift it, guys. It's, it's heavy. You gotta grab it from the middle and lift and kinda pull it up. There we go. There's your procedure. I didn't do that as well as I would have liked, but there is what we didn't get to see in the last video, and that's why I decided to go ahead and video this today. Yeah, that's a, that's a beauty. That is an absolute beauty right there. And you know, I've always thought something like this would be very difficult to work on, but it actually looks like everything is reasonably accessible. You can get to your plugs, your plug wires. I don't know about all that. <laughs> you can see the plug wires disappear somewhere back into the abyss. But truthfully though, it looks like a lot of what you would need to routinely access on this car is very easily accessed from up here. Not bad at all. It's a little tighter over here, but overall not bad. Not bad at all. Check the oil. This thing's been running recently because she is, she is warm. Let's see. Oil looks good. Yes, it does. All right, guys, and we know that it runs because we have fired it up before, but ooh, looks like somebody had a little mishap there. That sucks. That wasn't like that the last time we saw it. I would love to get this car. I mean, I was falling in love with it the last time it was here, and I'm still in love with her today. And you want to know something crazy. The car is a big car, right? But... Uh, I think it's easier to get in and out of the MG than it is to get in and out of this car. We'll go ahead and fire it up for you guys. There we go. Clutch in. It's in neutral. There she goes.
47,000 miles, guys. Looks like she's got a little bit of a charging system issue. Golly, man. Wow. sucker is loud. Eli, if you're watching this video, hey man, uh, you've been wanting one of these for a while now. She runs good. Runs really well. Listen to that. Absolutely beautiful. Beautiful. Alarm set. Uh-oh. God, guys. Um, hmm. I'm going to ask you guys an honest question. All right, and I want you to I want you to be serious with me here. I'm going to grab it from up here and close it properly. And there is a closing procedure too. Make sure that the little rails end up where they're supposed to be. Okay, and then you never, ever, ever close a Viper hood from right here. You'll damage the hood, you'll damage the paint. Okay, the hinges are actually up here. So you, just like that. You can see there's handprints all over here. You're supposed to close it from right here because that's where the bracketry is for the, uh, for the hinges. But there she is, but I do have an honest question for you guys, seriously. 2019 Corvette, the C7 that I had, the 2016 Tesla P100D with ludicrous mode. All right. What what other cool cars did I have? Uh, yeah, honestly, I don't really remember. But anyway, take a pick from any of the most recent cars that I've had. Would you take those, any one of those, or would you rather have an old 1995 Dodge Viper? I'll tell you right now, the Corvette that I had was uh, $63,000. And it was a fun car, absolutely a fun car. The Tesla Model S that I had was $75,000. And you can buy this right now for 25 grand. Which one would you, honestly, when it comes to looks, I think this thing takes the cake, man, absolutely. You just better know how to drive because otherwise you're gonna turn this into a crowd eating Mustang. Next, how about a 2009 Jeep Wrangler? Hmm, it's it's listed as front end damage. I'm pretty sure it's salvage. I'm looking at it though, and I don't really see it. I mean, there is some damage. You've got a, a little bend on the bumper here. You've got a tad bit of damage. This is just a plastic, it's a big plastic panel, guys. This comes right off. You could change this out. The fender looks like it's pushed in a tad down here, but I mean, seriously, guys, you could pull that right back out. Um, the rest, <laughs> the rest of it actually looks pretty dang good. This is, uh, this is really interesting, guys. It's at $1,900. $1,900 for a Jeep. What do you think? Do you think it had aftermarket wheels and they put these back on? Wrangler Unlimited. 135,000 miles. It says non-runner and no key. Let's take a look at these tires. No, it looks like someone was using it, right? <laughs> Definitely looks like someone was using it. Huh. I could actually really use this. <laughs> I've been considering putting a spare tire back on my Jeep. I don't know. So for everybody's information, I had a lot of you saying that you would love to see the 12 Pro Max in action doing Copart walk around. So I got news for you. Every Copart video this week is being filmed on the uh, iPhone 12 Pro Max. You guys asked for it and I am giving it to you. I decided we're gonna go ahead and just use it and see how it does. Now I am using external microphones. I'm using the Rode uh, wireless Go mics. All right, so this is not the factory audio. This is definitely way better. But everything you're going to see this week, and you're going to get six Copart walk-arounds this week, uh, Monday or Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, will all be 
Copart walkarounds this week. I, I'm actually, I'm sorry guys if I'm looking at this a little more than normal. I actually really, oh, I actually really like this. <laughs> uh, let's see if it does have a key. It does. It says it doesn't, but it does. It's listed as a non-runner, but this is probably one that'll run with no issues. Does it have power? Yes, power everything. Oh, dead as a doornail. Okay. Okay, no big deal. No big deal. I was looking for the hood release. I'm, I know better. I know better. I know better. I have one of these, man. Come on now. This does not look bad at all. What do we got? The 3.8? That looks like the 3.8. Yeah, 3.8 liter. Everything under here actually looks pretty decent, guys. In fact, I see an orange sticker under here. Let me prop up the, oop, the hood prop is broken. Oh boy, okay. Um, okay, so you guys aren't gonna be able to see it, I don't think, I'm gonna try to get you in. But do you see the orange sticker down there? Okay, that orange sticker, I can't get you a good angle on it, man. But that sticker, is a Mopar remanufactured engine sticker. Okay. Yes. Yes, the engine in this has been rebuilt. So the odometer obviously shows 135,000 miles on it, but that is not going to be accurate. I'm looking for any leaks. I don't really see anything leaking. I'd almost need to pull a Carfax on this just to find out. Uh, I'm sure a replacement engine would be on the Carfax report. Anyway, guys, let's throw a jump on this. Let's see what it does. All right. Trusty old booster pack installed. Oh, this door is going to try to slam on me. Now, she'll fire right up. Don't let the tapping bother you. Mine does that too if it sits for a long period of time. Okay, so the good news is we don't have any warning lights other than a TPMS light uh, and an airbag light. Okay. Yeah. That's it. An airbag light. Does the important window work? Why, yes, it does. I hear a uh, an exhaust shield rattling. No big deal. Power locks. They don't seem to be... They don't seem to be functioning. I wanted to open the back here and see... Uh, oh, there it goes. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, my. Are you serious right now? Okay. That's, that's gross. But, yeah, okay. <laughs> Ugh. Let's see how the engine sounds over here. I hear a slight exhaust leak, I believe. I mean, come on guys, it's old. It's over 10 years old and it's got a hundred and, well, we don't know how many miles the engine's got on, but I can tell you this, I do see fuel, oil and stuff on the intake manifold down there. So uh, the engine's got some miles on her. Most likely this is probably something that was replaced early on in its life. And uh, the engine probably has 100,000 or so on it, but you'd really need to run a uh, Carfax report just to be sure. But it sounds good. It sounds really, really good. It needs a set of tires. Honestly, what it needs is a set of wheels and tires because those are pretty ugly. Let's uh, put it in gear. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, forward and backward. Four high, four low. Look, there it goes. Four wheel drive, man. Ah, she never, these things never like, there we go. Huh. They never like to go back. <laughs> what about air conditioning? I think I just heard the compressor kick in. Yes, we did. Cold air too, guys. Cold air conditioning. All right, that's gonna, 
that's gonna wrap this one up. This is this is a steal of a deal. I know it ain't gonna go for nineteen hundred dollars, but uh, this is one. Honestly, I am keeping my eye on this. Next, we have a Pontiac G6 GT, and let's see. It's a it's a two thousand and nine. It says key fob does not work. 197,000 miles on the odometer. Now, this is one that uh, the pictures, it's really hard to tell how bad the damage is to the, rear, to the rear end. So I decided to come out here and take a closer look at it for myself. Uh, sometimes you get lucky and it just needs a bumper reinforcement. And uh, this one's got a little more damage than that, doesn't it? Yeah, so you can see it's definitely been damaged here. The reinforcement has been damaged right here as well. Honestly, though, it doesn't look that bad. This is something you could get one of those porta powers from Harbor Freight, and you could just kind of start pushing this back out. This would be really easy to straighten out, guys. It really would. Let's see if the uh, trunk will open. It would also be nice to see what the... Ooh. Yeah, it doesn't sound like the trunk's gonna want to open, does it? I'd like to... No, okay, trunk doesn't open. I'd like to be able to see in there a little better. Comes with the bumper though. It's really not that bad. It's not that bad. The only thing that kind of kills it for me on this car is the mileage, man. 200,000 miles, it's nasty inside. It's, pretty, it's, it's really nasty. Take a look at that steering wheel, man. Like that is, ugh, that is gross, pretty gross. It's, yeah, this is just, you know, this was somebody's beater, somebody's beater with a heater. It doesn't look like they cared about it too much. Ooh. Blend door actuator is bad, typical GM thing. You can hear it clicking. Power steering pump is whining. TPMS light is on. Other than the TPMS light though, it's not bad. There's no check engine lights or ABS lights or anything like that. So that's good. Let's put it into gear. Reverse. Drive. Oh, that noise is... That does not sound good at all. Not at all. Let's check the air conditioning real quick. We'll pop that hood. Important window. Does not work. Boy, that is a... That's an awful noise. Awful noise. Okay, first thing I notice is there's no coolant. The coolant bottle is empty. We have what sounds like a whining power steering pump. 200,000 miles basically on the odometer. Tires are decent though. Body's decent. But I'm going to be honest with you guys, this is one that uh, I'm hoping maybe after it warmed up, you know, ran for a minute or two, that it would stop. But I don't think so. I don't think so. The damage back here is definitely more than I was hoping for. And it looks like, doesn't it look like it's been sitting? It's got like mildew and stuff all over it. So to me, it looks like this thing has been sitting for a long time. It's it's just one of those cars, man. I can look at it and I can tell. AC works though, it does. I don't think so, guys. I don't think so. This'll probably go cheap. And you know, I'm like the king of cheap Copart cars. But uh, this has got a little more damage in the back than I would like. It's got a few more problems than I care to deal with. And it's, it's, it's just, it's filthy. It's one of those cars that you could look at it and just, you could tell that whoever owned it just didn't really care much about it. And with all of that, this is one I don't want.
Next, we have a 2014 Jeep Cherokee that is hail damaged with 87,000 miles on the odometer. Uh, it's covered in a lot of dirt and dust. So it makes it really hard to see the extent of the hail damage, but I think you can see clearly from the shattered windshield. And there are some pretty big dents on the roof. I think you can get a, a pretty good idea of how severe the hail damage is on this one. Honestly, though, it doesn't look half bad. It really doesn't. It's a Latitude Edition. I just ran into the mirror of a truck. Ah, it's got some damage over here, too. Interesting. All right. So, someone did a little side swiping, I guess. These are really interesting tires. Are these winter tires? Take a look at the tread pattern on these bad boys. Uh, these are Goodyear. Goodyear what? Goodyear Vector Four Seasons. That is a very peculiar design, huh? Okay, uh, judging from the sticker being all cracked and faded, I'm thinking this has been here a while. Uh, I would say at a minimum six months. How's the interior? Doesn't look bad. It doesn't look too bad. All right. All right, I'll give her a shot, man. I actually kind of like this. It's dead, isn't it? Yeah, of course it is. Of course it is. It's a little dirty, but honestly, it's not to the point where uh, I wouldn't be interested in it. I am just, I'm kind of tired of dealing with cars that are so dirty that it requires like extensive deep cleaning just to make them look reasonable. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just so far past that, man. I'm, I'm done with it. All right. This is easy enough. Let's put a jump on it. Let's see what she'll do. It's listed as a run and drive, so should fire right up. All right. Let's see what she'll do. I can guarantee you it's going to start chattering when we first start it, so be prepared for that. Let's get you a little closer to the dash. There we go. No! It didn't. I'm honestly surprised. I thought for sure this thing was going to be chattering. Look at the lights here. <laughs> she hasn't been she hasn't been running a while, guys. Let's go ahead and put it in uh, in reverse. Yep. Yep, right into gear. Very nice. How about the 4x4 modes? The dashboard is having a little problem. It's kind of flickering on and off right now. The, see that? Yeah. The da <laughs> dash is... Uh, the insert cluster is having... There we go. There we go. Okay, she's back to life now. She's back to life. We've got sports, sand, mud, all of this stuff. And it all seems to be functioning properly. So let's open the hatch. Does it open itself? Oh, it does. Wow. Okay. Uh, important. Got to try the air conditioning. All right, here we go. Kick that on to low and let's see if it does anything here. I'm not quite sure how to change the direction climate. There we go. This is this is a little different. I've never used one of these before. We'll do there we go. Oh, it is touchscreen. Okay, max AC coming right out of the vents. There we go. We'll let that run for a minute and we'll check out the hatch. Important window works. Perfect. Okay. Let's see what's under here. Nothing. All right. And does it close by itself? You just push a button and it. No, you got to close it yourself, I guess. That doesn't make sense. It's got a remote opener. I'm sure it closes by itself. I just can't figure it out. Oh, you can tell it. This thing has just been sitting for a long time, guys. Long time. 
yeah, not bad. This is gonna go well outside of my price range. That shouldn't be surprising to any of you. Let's go ahead and turn that off. Air conditioning works great. It goes into gear. It sounds great. Important window works like miles aren't too bad. Tires are in decent condition. Listen to her run though. Look at this. It sounds great. Throw a windshield on it. And you've got yourself a nice daily driver, guys. Don't worry. I know a lot of you are going to wonder what these things sell for. We're going to come back uh, Monday, and we will do your Copart auction results video. So you'll get to see what all of the cars from this week's walk around sold for. Let's move on to the next. Last one on the list today, a 2017 Mini Cooper that's been flooded. Now, what I don't know is if this is a Mini Cooper S... I do know it's listed as a run and drive though, 102,000 miles on the odometer. Body looks good. Tires on the back look great. Tires on the front, eh, you know, probably need replacing, honestly. Yeah, back tires look really good, although the tires don't match on this. <laughs> they don't, they don't match. Let's take a look. Such a small car, man. It's coming from a guy that drives an MG from time to time. Okay, I can't really say that. I, I don't get to drive the MG because it never runs. It's a British car. It spends more time broken than it does fixed. It looks good though, right? Okay. It's obviously not an S model. So, there's that. <sighs> Flooded, huh? Let's take a whiff. Um... I mean, it doesn't smell great in here, but this doesn't smell like a flood car. <sighs> no, this doesn't smell like a flood car. Let's take a look. Floor mats. I don't see anything growing under them, nor under those. I don't see any sign of intrusion of water into the cab at all. Not down here either. I mean, it's dirty, but... That's about it, okay. Now these have these cool little pucks. It's actually one of the things I like about it. I know it's a gimmick, but I think it's cool. You got this little puck here, and I thought you had to stick it into something, but I guess not. And I never can remember, there's the start button right there. There it is. Remote control, engine will not start. I guess you gotta, what, plug it in somewhere? Golly, gimmicks, man, gimmicks. Hold remote control to steering column. Are you serious? I've got to hold the remote. Okay, so I gotta, <laughs> I gotta hold the remote control to the steering column, and push the start button and hold the camera at the same time. <laughs> this is about ridiculous. All right, hold remote control to steering column. I, okay. I'm getting, I'm getting kind of aggravated here. Let's try this. It's not doing it. Okay. I don't know where this thing is supposed to go, but I'm going to figure it out. And we're back. So I had to watch a YouTube video about how to do it. So apparently over here, there's a picture of a key and you have to hold this to that and push the start button at the same time. And when you do that, it's supposed to come to life. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to sit you guys down right here next to me and i'm going to put the key right here hold the key to the steering column there we go there we go we did it okay she's a runner that's for sure it sounds good. Yeah, reverse. Drive. Okay, what about air conditioning? Air conditioning is super important, to guys, in case you don't know. I'm sure you do, but AC is like, it's a must. This thing's got heated seats, too. Nice. Ugh. 
check the important window. Yeah. I don't feel cold air yet, but some of these cars take a while, so let's see what it looks like in the hatch. Let's see if we got anything cool back here. No, it doesn't look like it. Just, well, there is some stuff back there, but you know, nothing that looks particularly interesting to me. Okay, let's take a look under the hood. Let's come back and check this AC real quick. No. Now, I can't remember, but I think this hood opens backwards, doesn't it? Or, or does it not? No, it doesn't. Okay. Boy, she sure likes to shake, doesn't she? Twin Power Turbo. Gee, where have I seen that before, BMW? Okay, hey, man, I don't know. I There's something about this little car that I just like. And so many of you have told me, you've warned me, you have. You told me to stay away from these cars, they're junk. And I hear you. <sighs> There's just something about these little minis I like. Oh, Yeah, it, it does like. Boy, it just... You could feel the vibration in the cab, man. Like, really bad. It doesn't feel like a misfire. I don't see any warning lights on the dash or anything. Yeah, there's no warning lights or anything up here. It's just, uh... I guess it's just kind of a rough rider. Golly. I shut it off. Yeah. That remote's dead, so I'm not going to start it up again, guys. Uh, depending on what this goes for, it is a newer model. Uh, so it's probably going to go for a little bit more than I would like to pay for it. But the fact of the matter is, it is listed as a flood car. And I don't see any signs of it being flooded at all. So I'm going to keep it on the list anyway. We'll see what it goes for. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we are done. So I am going to get out of here. I hope you enjoyed today's Copart Walk Around. Remember, all of this was recorded on the iPhone 12 Pro Max. So this is kind of a, a double benefit type of video. You get to see the Copart cars. And for those of you that are kind of on the edge, trying to make a decision whether or not to upgrade to the 12 Pro Max or keep your older phone, hey, you can watch this video. It's only recorded in 1080, 60, so there's nothing special with it. Watch the video and then you can decide for yourself if the camera quality is worth switching. Personally, I think the camera quality is great. I'm loving it. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up. If you didn't, go ahead and give it a big thumbs down. Consider subscribing to the channel if you're not currently subscribed. I would truly appreciate it. Thank you to Copart for allowing us to do this. Truly appreciate them as well. I appreciate each and every one of you. I don't think I say that enough. I really do. I appreciate all of you for allowing me to do this, for giving me the opportunity to entertain you. And I hope I can continue doing this for a very long time. Guys, drop your comments down below. Stay safe out there, and I will catch you all very soon in the next one.